This giant switch has 64 800 gigabit ethernet ports. You can also break those ports out into eight 100 gig ports for a total of 512 100 gigabit ports on a single switch. At 51.2 terabits per second, this switch is almost unimaginable in how fast it is. It's also the fastest switch that we will have taken apart. So we have a lot to cover here, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna take a look at the Marvell Terralynx 10. Now, back in 2021, there was a company called Innovium, and they were right down the way. They were a startup trying to break into the switching market. And frankly, there were a lot of folks trying to break Broadcom's stranglehold on the merchant silicon switch market, and Innovium was probably the most successful. Now, back in 2021, we were looking at Terralynx 7, which was a 12.8 terabit or a 400 gigabit 32 port switch. Back in those days, that was pretty high end and it was something that some of the hyperscalers actually started to buy. Now, what happened since then is the 25.6 terabit switch came out and uh, that family was, I would just say, probably a little bit less deployed than a lot of other generations. And if you look at some of the market statistics, you'll just see that that was not the most popular generation. But what is expected to be a more popular generation is the 51.2 terabit switch. And that is one of the big reasons that Marvell bought Innovium and is now bringing out their offer to go compete with the likes of Broadcom. And frankly, guys, this is just a fun look at some really cool hardware. The fact of the matter is that if you're running a small network, you probably don't need something like this. But if you are running a large AI cluster or large infrastructure, then something like this can save a huge amount of power. Using these large switches in very large clusters can yield things like a megawatt of power savings, which is insane. And you know what would be cooler than talking about a 51.2 terabit per second switch? Actually getting to tear one apart. That is why I am here at Marvell's headquarters in Santa Clara, California. So, well, let's get inside and go start looking at the switch. A quick note here, because George and I had to travel, of course, Marvell is sponsoring this video, so we're just gonna say that and keep going. Okay, so it's time now to tear apart a Terralynx 10 switch. Now, this is a giant 51.2 terabit switch. And I figured a lot of folks don't get to see inside of these switches. So this is a great opportunity to go look at what one of these looks like. So let's start at the front panel here. Now, of course, this is a modern switch. So you're gonna have things like an out-of-band management port, serial console port, and USB port. Fine, table stakes. But the even more fun thing is this selection of 64 800 gigabit ethernet ports. And so let's talk about what you can do with these OSFP ports. Now, these are OSFP, which if you don't know, is a little bit bigger than the standard QSFP modules that you may have seen, if, especially if you're doing like 40 gig, 100 gig, 200 gig networking. These are much larger modules, and that's really to provide better cooling and more space for components inside them. Now, one of the really cool things that you get to do with these is, let's talk about this module right here. This is an 800 gigabit per second OSFP module, but it's a ZR plus module, which means it can go up to 1,000 kilometers. Just to give you some sense of how far 1,000 kilometers is, San Francisco to Seattle is about 1,093 kilometers, which means that if you're in the suburbs of both, you can just take this module, you can put it into the front of the switch, and you can transmit data all the way between the two cities. Now, Marvell actually makes a lot of the components that go inside of these modules. And there are not just modules that go between cities that are like far flung from each other. There are also modules that go between the different servers and different parts of modern data centers. Modern data centers have giant fiber networks, and so you need to span many kilometers even just within a data center itself. Now, of course, you can go online and you can find plenty of switch, just port photos and all that kind of stuff, but what you never get to see is inside a switch. So my thought was, let's go take a look inside the switch and see how this whole thing is built. So when we talk about the inside of switches, one of the big things you have to remember is that you always get a lot of power now going through modern switches. These are no longer like two, 300 watt devices. Those days are long gone. Let me just give you some idea. Each of these OSFP 800 modules, the spec is that they can run at up to 28 watts. Now, if you have 64 of these, that means that you have almost 1.8 kilowatts just of optical modules on the front of this switch. And that's why you see that these OSFP modules often have heat sinks built directly into the modules themselves. And behind those modules, you then have a giant heat sink. And I already kind of unscrewed this so that way you can see underneath it. But just kind of look at the size of this thing. It is absolutely huge. And the reason for that is that the Terralynx 10 chip that's in here 
uses up to 500 watts. And so between the about 1.8 kilowatts that you have in these OSFP 800 cages up here, plus a 500 or so watt typical for the Terralynx 10 chip, that gives you about 2.3 kilowatts before you even get to the back part of the switch. And that power consumption, by the way, is very typical on modern switches. It's just as these things have gotten bigger, denser, we tend to see higher power consumption. Now that doesn't mean that this is like some kind of like old process node switch by any means. This is a five nanometer switch chip. And part of the magic of the Terralynx 10 is really that it's not just a high capacity switch. It's also a low latency switch as well. Now we'll of course let you go look up all the specs we may pop them up on the screen or something like that. But the overall idea of this is moving a lot of data at very low latency and at a very high throughput. That's exactly what you need for things like AI applications these days. Now this switch is just one of the switches that could be using this Terralynx platform. But something I wanted to show you on the overall switch is something that's really cool and that you may have seen in some of our other switch review videos. What you may have seen in those other videos is that to service something like 64 ports or like higher port count switches and cages, you would have multiple layers of PCB. So you'd have like a PCB with the switch chip and then maybe you know some of the ports on front. And then you'd also have another PCB with some of the other cages on it. And that solution is good, but on the other hand, it decreases your reliability versus having a single board, which is one of the big innovations in this one that we're looking at here. And so if you can see this, half of the OSFP cages are on the bottom side of the board, the other half are on top, and that's what you can see up here. But let's just talk about some of the other things that you would see in a switch like this. And one of the really fun things is that you have a entire management board over here. Now, management in switches is super common these days, and you will have a management plane just for things like running Sonic or whatever kind of network operating system you want. But this uses a Com Express module, and the advantage of that is that you can swap out the CPU for a different module. You can put different RAM in it because it has you know socket RAM, but you can have you know whatever kind of module you want to go put in there, you can go put in there. So if a somebody wants to go put like a ARM processor, somebody wants to go put a different x86 processor, whatever the heck you want to go put in there, you, if you can get it on a COM module, you can use it here. Now, of course, you can put different CPUs and different COM Express modules in here, but this one is actually using a Marvell ARM CPU. And that's what's running the management plane for this entire switch. Now, something that's just super fun, I'm gonna show you two little features here. So one, uh, sometimes we see when we have these control boards that the storage actually goes onto the COM module. This one has the storage, you can see the little M.2 SSD right here, just kind of a fun little thing. That's the storage for the operating system, I'm guessing. And then you also have this little PCIe slot. Now I asked, why the heck is there a PCIe slot in the middle of this giant super fast switch? And what you can actually put in here is you can either put a NIC or you can use another you know, board that doesn't have a Com Express form factor or something like that. But you can actually put a NIC in the back of your switch, which is just kind of crazy. Now, one of the other really cool things that's done in this switch that we haven't seen in some of the older generations of switches, but I really like in this, is the fact that these power supplies are directly going into the main switch PCB. Now, there are some of the other ones that you've seen probably on STH where the power supplies go into the back and there's like some kind of daughter board and there's a lot of cables or like whatever to get power through the entire switch. And by directly putting the power supplies into the main switchboard, it means that you have fewer components, kind of like what we see in modern servers, and that increases your reliability. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, hey, you got about 1.8 kilowatts of OSFP 800 cages up here, you have a 500 watt typical switch chip, and then you have some other components that are probably low power but down here. So obviously it's not just the power supplies that are cooling this entire thing, of course. Instead, what we have is these giant fan modules in the back. Now there's only four modules back here and they're able to cool all of this in the switch. And when I was taking this switch apart, I found this little tiny port back here. Now you might ask, what in the heck is a random port doing in this giant switch? Well, it's not so random. Instead, the Terralynx 10 has two 10 gigabit ports that can connect to devices for management, telemetry, all that kind of stuff. One of those goes to the Com Express module, which is over here, and that's your management processor. But you also have this little one right here, which is just an extra 10 gig network port in the middle of your switch. 
Okay, now we've looked at the box, and before we get to performance, let's just talk about some of the things that actually make this different, other than the fact that it's just one of the fastest switches you can go buy. The first thing is really latency. The Inovium idea was to have deterministic performance, great latency, and also have things like telemetry. When you're doing things like you have big AI clusters or just large clusters, you wanna have low latency that's very predictable. That's important just because you wanna make sure that you don't have nodes that are just sitting around stalling the entire workload, right? And over the years and through trial and error, folks have found that having low quality quality switches and low quality networking in their data center, especially their AI clusters, means that you have like tons of systems that end up just idling, waiting for information to get updated. And all that little downtime means that these very expensive boxes are not being utilized. So of course you wanna have the best network that you can. Now, the second thing that these 51.2 terabit switches gives you is just frankly a better Radix. Now, most of the folks in the networking industry know what Radix is, but if you are new to the subject, Radix is basically the number of active connections that you can make on a switch. And there are some of the 51.2 terabit switches out there that will only be able to do 256 connections. Now, to some folks, that probably doesn't matter, but to others, it matters big time. And really the reason for that is that the higher your Radix is on your switch and just the more devices that you're able to go plug in, one of the advantages to that is that you often need fewer layers of switching. Now, of course, if you think about a single switch cluster, you can get 512 nodes all connected via 100 gigabit ethernet all on one of these switches. Or you could have a number of 800 gigabit per second nodes and have some uplinks and whatever the heck you want and 64 port configuration. But once you start adding layers of switching and you start needing multiple switches because your cluster gets too big, well, then you have to go and use a bunch of your ports for things like uplinks. And so by using higher rated switches, one of the advantages is that you often get to remove layers in your network. And by removing layers, you, you know, remove those extra hops so you get better performance. Plus it just costs less, not just in buying switches because you need fewer switches, but it also uses less power. Now, Marvell sent me this example of a 64,000 node AI cluster, which you might think is big, but stay tuned on STH. We're probably gonna have something a little bigger if uh, all goes according to plan pretty soon. But in a 64,000 node cluster, something that you would normally see is like on a 256 rating switch, you might see like three layers of switching. Now, of course, everybody builds their networks differently, but this is just an example. But using a 512 rating switch, you're able to go and only have two layers of networking. Now, just doing the math in the example, you'd go from 1280 switches down to 768. And that's about a one third reduction in the number of switches. And because you know, you're removing 512 of these giant switches, that also means that you're removing about a megawatt, maybe a little over a megawatt of power. Now a megawatt of power every year might be something like, I don't know, maybe about a million bucks or something like that. Of course, plus or minus based on where you are. If you're in some places in Europe, that's way more expensive. But if you're in a relatively inexpensive place, that's not too bad to use. And of course, if you're building a giant AI cluster like this and care about that megawatt, well, on the other hand, you probably just want that extra megawatt to go add more AI compute nodes. Now, just like the Terralynx 7 generation, you have things like the programmability, the telemetry, and all of that kind of stuff that you would expect. But well, let's talk about the performance of it real quick. So we went to the lab at Marvell, and that was a horrible idea. And if you want to know why it's a horrible idea, well, you might want to lower your volume for this next little bit. Yeah, we're at the lab in Marvell, but it is so loud in here that we're going to do this back on the main set. Yeah, of course, you can't hear anything in there. But while we were in there, we did get to go see the big network testing machines. And of course, we we're passing 800 gigabits of traffic over the switch, no problem, which is just kind of cool. Just to give you an idea of why that's cool, if you were to go buy a modern AMD Epic or Intel Xeon server, you probably have PCIe Gen 5 today. And a PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot is not fast enough to drive an 800 gigabit connection. Now, in all these videos, I like to have a key lessons learned. And let me kind of give you some just thoughts on this, right? Now, I know a lot of folks that are watching this are gonna say, hey, 800 gigabit ethernet, that's so much faster than I need. Heck, I'm still on 100 gigabit or slower, maybe on 10, 25, whatever it is. Let's be clear, 800 gigabit at the time that we're doing this video is like a spaceship technology, right? Your server can't even handle 800 gigabits per second. But of course, Marvell has these certes that allow them to go and split these things out and the technology in the Terralinks 10 that allows them to split them out to basically have a ton of 100 gig ports if that's what you're using. 
using. Now, of course, we've been doing AI training servers and stuff on STH since like 2016, 2017. So there are a ton of folks out here that are in the industry and this is exactly the type of thing that they want to deploy or what they're gonna deploy next. These 51.2 terabit switches are really kind of the leading edge of what you'd get in a switch like this. So I think that, you know, there are a lot of folks that maybe a year from now, they may be deploying a Terralynx 10. But let's face it, if you're in the STH family, you love technology and seeing something like this is just so freaking cool. We can even look inside the switch, which you just never get to see. So guys, I hope you like this video. If you did like this video and you know somebody that might just think it's interesting or might be looking for a fast switch like this, well, why don't you share this video and tell them, hey, check it out. But also make sure you give this video a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.